Josh Smith with GottaBeMobile.com. I'm going to tell you about the iPhone 6 release date and the most important iPhone 6 rumors that we know about right now a month before we expect you'll be able to buy a new iPhone 6. Here we have two iPhone 6 mock-ups. Now these show what we think the iPhone 6 will look like on the release date later this year. So far rumors point to an iPhone 6 event on September 9th. Now, using Apple's history and timing, this means the iOS 8 release date will probably come on September 17th, and the iPhone 6 release date will probably come on September 19th. That's a Friday. We'll probably see stores open early for that. One thing that could happen this year is we could see the 4.7 inch iPhone 6 over here in silver arrive first, and a separate iPhone 6 release date for a larger iPhone 6 a little bit later. We're hearing that the production got started later on this bigger iPhone 6, and it's a pretty drastic change from Apple's iPhone 5S, which was 4 inch, 4.7 inch, and now 5.5 inch. So Apple is taking their time and getting that right according to the rumors. We don't know if there'll be an iPhone 6 pre-order right now, but you can check out the rest of these iPhone 6 features to see what you can expect later this year. Here's a quick look at some of the iPhone 6 features we expect this year. First off, bigger screens, 4.7 inch and 5.5 inch. Now we also hear that this front panel is going to be made of sapphire in some way. This could arrive only on some higher end models, it's not quite clear, but what you'll get with sapphire is a much stronger screen. You're going to be able to take car keys, knives, etc. to this and it's not going to show scratches. This is just a mock-up, so if you see scratches on this, it's not sapphire. Another thing that we've seen on other phones with sapphire screens is better resistant to breaking when dropped. If you drop a phone with a sapphire screen and it lands with the screen dead on a rock, the phone just bounces right off. Whether or not the iPhone 6 would be able to do that, we don't know. Another thing about the screens, we're hearing some variety of resolutions. The most common one is 1704 by 960. We're also hearing a higher 1428 by 828, something around there. You can check out Gotta Be Mobile for the exact specs that leaks are pointing to right now. And that would allow for a retina resolution on both of these larger screens, higher resolution. It's going to pack more pixels in per inch. The more pixels you have per inch, the better looking the screen is. You get more detail in your photos, your videos, and gaming. From a design standpoint, the biggest change this year is we have an all metal back. Now there are these white lines here which represent some type of break in the metal to help communication. And the Apple logo should be a special type of uh, material that will allow communications so that way you sell your Wi-Fi and GPS can communicate outside of metal which is traditionally difficult. Now these white lines may be less pronounced but there's probably going to be something there. We've seen something similar on the HTC One M8 and the HTC One so expect something along those lines. Another thing that we're noticing is the power button is no longer on the top it's now moved to the side and that really helps with one-handed operation because on a larger phone you're going to be able to reach here easier than up here. On a 4.7 you can hit there, but if you're holding the 5 inch it's a lot easier to hit this than it is to kind of stretch and reach up there. The other design change we see, there's a curve that kind of starts on the front edge and curves all the way around the back. And our volume buttons are now kind of pill shaped. The speaker grill is slightly different and our corners are more rounded on both of these models. As far as iPhone 6 camera rumors go, we're hearing between an 8 megapixel and a 13 megapixel camera. The sensor may be 8 megapixel with bigger pixels, similar to the strategy HTC used, or it could use a 13 megapixel Sony sensor. And either way, Apple has a tradition of delivering better looking photos and better photo quality with each iPhone iteration, so we expect nothing less this year. Now, one thing that could happen, as you can see on this mock-up back here, the camera sticks out slightly. We're hearing that that is a possibility this year, and one reason that might be is due to optical image stabilization technology not being able to fit completely in a thinner iPhone 6. Not sure if that's something that will come to pass, or if this is just something that case makers are using to make sure that they have the room there. Now you'll notice also that we see a circular flash here compared to the iPhone 5S, which features a pill-shaped dual LED True Tone flash and we've seen at least one part leak so far that hints at a dual LED circular shaped flash. So we don't expect to lose that feature that helps the iPhone take better looking pictures when you do need the flash with more realistic colors and warmth. So hopefully that will stick around on the iPhone 6.
As far as iPhone 6 specs go, expect an Apple A8 processor inside, iOS 8 for the software. We have that 4.7 inch and 5.5 inch screens with that Sapphire cover in there somewhere. We could see a new 128 gigabyte storage option. There's also been some rumors that we could drop 16 or 32 gigabyte storage options. Not quite clear yet what's going to happen there. A higher resolution 3.2 megapixel front facing camera. That's a jump up from 1.2 on the iPhone 5S. We could also see a 1,810 milliamp hour battery in the 4.7 inch iPhone, which is about a 14% increase and a large 2,915, I believe, milliamp hour battery in the 5.5 inch iPhone. And that's pretty close to what we see in the LG G3 and the Galaxy Note 3. We could also experience 802.11ac Wi-Fi, which is gonna give you faster Wi-Fi and better performance if you're using a 11ac router. We expect an improved Touch ID sensor, so hopefully you'll get a little bit easier unlocking using that, and there's more uh, access for developers to use that in iOS 8. Finally, NFC may make it to the iPhone finally, which will allow you to tap the back of your iPhone to a credit card terminal at select stores and actually make a payment without taking a credit card out of your wallet, turn your phone into a wallet. All of these phones should run iOS 8, which gives us a whole lot of cool new features. You can check out our iOS 8 video for more on this, that way you get a better look at everything it offers. It's hard to pull all of that into an iPhone 6 video. If you check a link in the description down below, you'll see more about that. Thanks for watching our iPhone 6 video to understand what you can expect from the new iPhone in 2014. If you check the links in the description, you'll head over to gotabemobile.com where you can see a slide with each of the different things that we've talked about here and links to nine other iPhone 6 comparisons that'll help you see how the iPhone 6 stacks up to the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 5, iPhone 4S, Galaxy S4, Galaxy S5, LG G3, basically every flagship phone on the market you'll understand how it compares to the iPhone 6. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please share it and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that like button.